Private War is the story of, it's really Marie Colvin's story and quite an incredible correspondent for the Sunday Times who really had her demons and she had an overwhelming desire to, to reach the people in war who suffer most, the, the ones who largely go unreported. Most wars are covered on a geopolitical level by experts who know all about the politics. There are some who know all about the military aspects. Marie's um, mission in life really was the lowest common denominator in any of these conflicts, which is really the women and children. You know, the men are either dragged off to fight or are more capable of fending for themselves. But it was them very people at the, with, you see this amazing footage of smart bombs going down chimneys, but for every smart bomb that goes down a the chimney, there are a thousand dumb bombs that are dropped mainly on women and children, especially in the last 20 years, that's become more so. It's less army. So Private Ward really is trying to tell the story of someone who paid a heavy price for, for what she did. Marie was notoriously bad at working with other photographers. She, they would often, she'd leave them, she wouldn't meet them. You know, people were always ringing the office going, I'm waiting for Marie, and they're going, um, I'm sorry, she's already gone into the war zone. Or she'd go in with them and send them off on a, a mission and never see them again. So when I met her and we worked together, you know, it was just, we were both completely at ease. We didn't have to talk about, she didn't have to say, get this shot, and I would never say, you've missed this. It just gelled and and yeah we got a lot of good work out of that being on set with jamie was was kind of weird for both of us in the beginning um i quickly realized that it was difficult for me to actually um say this is what i do or this is how i be so i, I really said come on let's go to the pub we sit down talk and you you take what you need um it was good to be able to give them, you know, um, advice about the situations um, and about how you react because it's it's very difficult initially when you go into a war zone and you see people suffering. There's a half of you really wants to to put the camera down and reach out and just help people, and you have to realise why you're there and you're there to tell their stories. You can't tell their stories if if you all of a sudden become a humanitarian kind of interventionist. Ros's approach was, oh, she was like a, a sponge, she just soaked up um, everything. We could. I gave a lot of um, video that I'd shot of Marie over the years to help her get the voice and the mannerisms. Um, and I actually saw her for the first time in costume on set in Jordan. And I was, I was quite stunned when I saw her. It was like, wow. Because it wasn't just the hair and the makeup and the, the patch, it was her mannerisms, the way she walked, the way she held herself. And she stayed in character, you know, for the whole day. She didn't, she wasn't Ros then, Marie. And the first time I heard her, I had the headphones on, I was sitting at the monitors, and she spoke. And I mean, I just, I got the hairs on the back of me, me, me arms and my neck, you know, re she really had transformed. I thought for both Jamie and Rose, it'd be nice to have something that we, we, we actually went through these situations with. So I gave Jamie a couple of cameras that I'd used in Libya, and which were really quite better than, you know, I'd seen a bit of life. Um, and I think for him, it was great just to have them little, I gave him a jacket as well. I thought the jacket I was blown up in and escaped him. I actually gave him that and it was covered in mud and had holes where the shell had gone through. Um, and for Ros, I gave him, I lent Ros Marie's lighter, so she had a little connection. So every time she lights a cigarette in the film, she's actually using Marie's lighter. Matthew is so diligent and, you know, his heart is set on getting the character right. And, you know, all credit to him. I don't, I don't know if that's normal, but, you know, Matthew is particularly... Um, devoted to capturing Marie and giving the world a true a true impression. There's nothing sensationalist about it. He just wants to tell the story as it happened and for that he deserves a lot of credit. To see the story of um the events, you know, of actual events created you know, for the for the movies in front of it, it took a little bit of getting used to it first. Um but 
No, I mean, I did get used to, you know, and when I saw what Jamie and Ross were coming, coming out with, you know, it was, it was really quite touching. There were, there, there were many times when I sat and watched real conversations that me and Marie had had, and Jamie and Ross playing them out. On a few occasions, I, I kind of let myself go, and it just made me realise what, how much I miss what we did, and I miss Marie, you know, so, the, yeah, it was, it was quite poignant at times. What do you think of this? I think, I think she'd have a wry smile about it, um, because she was she was quite humble, you know. She didn't. She was never, um, you know, not one of these people who sat in bars telling war stories, etc. You know, she 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 did what she did, came back, um, spent a week at home, and she would be planning the next mission. But I think, you know, I think she'd be quite touched to be recognised um, in this way. Deep down inside, she'd, she'd never say that, though. She'd be quite, um, quite humble. That was interesting. Um, in Jordan, we, we kind of went from war to war within one week, which was quite unusual. Um, but again, the, the, the locations, I think I picked up on it one day. I was, um, we were out in a Iraqi checkpoint, and... Everything was so, you know, the research and, you know, I mean, this is the first real feature film I've, I've worked on. And I was, I think I needed to go to the toilet at one point. We'd been at this checkpoint and I walked away to go into the, the desert and I found myself looking for landmines, you know, and it was that, that's how, you know, if you let yourself go, you can get sucked into it. And then two days later, we'd be in Sri Lanka in some palm grove. So it was like um, a whistle stop tour. Of you know your last five last five war zones. I think now is a good time to tell this story. You know that we've had five years without Marie, and I think it's it does take a certain amount of time for for the dust to settle. There's a lot of emotion um, goes with losing somebody so close. I mean, particularly for me, you know that was can she was my life for many years in war zones. So for me, I think I really would like the world to know the story of such an extraordinary character, you know, somebody so devoted um, to the story that, you know, she has become a story. And I think it'd be a miss not to tell her story. I just hope that when people see this film, they walk away and, you know, they have a... They, they spend some time going, what an extraordinary person, you know, in, in um, you know, the me media and journalism suffers a lot, especially now with the stories of fake news and there's this whole kind of kickback against the media, for, you know, led primarily by Trump and, you know, this Facebook and fake news, this whole, I think it's perfect time and to, to say to the world, well, hold on just a minute, you know, don't tart everyone with the same brush, there are people who aren't. You know, this is the, the opposite of fake news. This is the, the harsh reality that some people will go to to bring the truth to the world.